please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hi, welcome back. You're with your stocks. Mahavir Khaitan has written to us from Chennai now. He says he holds 400 shares in Strides Shasun. He has bought it at 820 rupees a share, so making about a 43,000 rupee loss over there. He's uh, been invested for one and a half years. He's a long-term investor and now needs advice. Uh, Shaina? I would continue to hold it for some time now. Uh, I believe that, uh, you know, very recently the company has got uh, some approvals from US FDA for launch of two products and these are the first approvals it's got from its Bangalore facility. So after all the restructuring the company had done, you know, they were in this phase where they were waiting, uh, getting their plants in place, with the bulk drug plant in place. So I think one should wait and uh, I think the investor should uh, get a better exit i would give it closer to 800 rupees so i would advise them to wait okay all right uh, shaina but uh, i think on that note we'll wrap up on the show thanks so much shaina uh, for uh, joining in and uh, giving us you know all those replies and thanks sandeep as well for giving us your quick uh, technical check on all those stocks by the way first source that was the stock that i wanted to spot you should pull up the intraday chart volumes have picked up for them and an otherwise dull market some green on the screen is what First Source is giving you. But we'll wrap up on this show. You do remember to keep sending us your stock queries. You can log on to our Money Control message board. Stay with us. Closing bell takes you through the final hour of trade. Asia relatively subdued this morning with a mild green take that we're seeing. DBI is now opening the layer of the case and there have been all, uh, 11 arrests still now. This intensity of FI selling is actually capping any kind of market rally. It will be ending the monopoly of Coal India. So that's one advantage to Coal India that our image will improve. 10,412, 13 is about where we've started uh, uh, and holding over there. Fiscal 19. Uh, it, the process should be completed. Whatever he does, as I have seen him do when he was leading TCS, would be, uh, uh, you know, to the best of uh, the stakeholders. The demographics of India are excellent and the prospects of economic growth are fantastic over the next five to ten years. It's been extraordinary. Absolutely extraordinary, not only for Tata's but for the whole country. The current cash on the parents' uh, books without uh, the reliance stake is already about $140 million. I don't see any reason why we should uh, not achieve our targets or uh, you know, what we've done this year or better. Than. Five and a half point change lower on the Nifty, 10,354 is where we stand. The Sensex is up 18 points, 33,721. It's been that uh, way since the morning. Yeah, crucial last hour coming up. Uh, there's been some attempt of recovery, of course, uh, in the at least in the large cap indices. Let's see if that can sustain or not. This is closing bell. I am Anuj. With me is Surabhi. Hi, Surabhi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Anuj. So, you know, simple question. Again, it's beginning to look a little feeble. Mm. You know, uh, again, the Nifty is off the high highest point of the day. And what do you make of this uh, rebound that we saw in banks? Is it all just expiry phenomena playing out largely now? Uh, are you not getting the deja vu kind of feeling? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was you know, <laughs> two thirty yesterday. I think it was we, the same situation. We were staring yeah. at almost the same situation. Yeah. I think the Nifty was like this. The Bank Nifty was like this. Mm. PSU banks were seeing uh, short covering bounce. So, uh, I, I mean, it's very rare that you know you see something like this. Uh, but it's it, you know. So does the market repeat last hour move? Probably the market does complete reverse of last hour move. That could happen. But you know, for whatever it's worth, the bulls are showing some fight. There's buying from the lows. Uh, and while you can make out that the bank Nifty is weak compared to the Nifty, because Nifty's got support from IT. Mm -hmm. And you know, IT is doing remarkably well, yeah. whether it was rupee or anything else. TC is the way that stock has rallied so be today. So obviously there's some buying for uh, for Nifty. And that's why the Nifty is comfortably holding Feb lows. Mm -hmm. But the bank Nifty is very precariously, you know, uh, poised at new lows and you know actually makes new lows intraday uh, that uh, I think is quite clearly visible uh, but let's see the last hour could be interesting uh, for now uh, you're holding low point as I said it's looking similar to yesterday but uh, do things repeat in the market in last hour I think we'll find out interesting 60 minutes up ahead here are the headlines on closing bell this afternoon 
another volatile day on Bilal Street, but the key indices are off the day's low. IT stocks trade strong as the rupee weakens, but mid-caps underperform. Investors tread cautiously ahead of FNO expiry tomorrow, as well as the FOMC minutes. The rupee hits a three-month low as the dollar gains strength, trades near 64.77 levels versus the USD. Pharma stocks like Sun Pharma as well as Aurobindo are trading weak on US FDA inspection fears for their respective plants. Okay, how should you position yourself in this last hour of trade then? Ashwini Gujral and Mitesh Thakkar now join us with closing strategies. Good afternoon. Ashwini, uh, been very volatile today. If you take a look at the intraday chart all over the place, uh, your thoughts on how the last hour could pan out and uh, how would you approach individual stocks? See, something very interesting has happened that uh, we broke below yesterday and day before's low and uh, the breakdown failed. Now that often happens when shorts are not seeing follow through on the downside and uh, you know hence uh, several shorts are now trapped. Plus today has been a very narrow range day and it's also very close to the 200 day moving average and you have a pivotal event probably overnight and uh, you know tomorrow you'll probably get the news etc so that way you know at least shorts even on the bank nifty regardless of whatever happened yesterday uh, should be covered and uh, for the last hour at least we have taken long positions i think uh, uh, nobody would carry uh, shorts uh, home given the market action today and uh, i would think some sort of a more serious uh, pullback could be on the cards mm -hmm. otherwise we would have broken down and gone much lower so that way you know that is a positive on bank nifty and because nifty already has it for support if banks also participate even the nifty could have a bit of a pullback having said that uh, i think uh, chola finance is a buy with a stop of 1340 target of 1410 sale is a sell with a stop of 86 target of 78 and uh, Balrampur Chini is a sell with a stop of 118, target of 110. Okay, so for this last hour long on Bank Nifty, Ashwini, what would be the stop? On Nifty, what would be the stop? See, stop basically uh, should be, say, you know, days low uh, because that is 80 to 100 points lower. But it all depends on, uh, you know, what kind of short covering comes in as we go into the close. Okay, as of now, the Nifty Bank continues to be quite volatile, uh, just around that 24,900 uh, sort of levels. It was attempting 25,000 at one point in time, but again, some volatility creeping in. Good afternoon, Mitesh. How uh, are you reading trade today, and what are the individual ideas for the last hour? See, I think uh, my observation is very similar to Ashwini. I think 24,800, you know, is something which is a very important level. We had a low of 24,820 yesterday and day before and kind of just broke below that and again moved above it. So I think today's low becomes an important pivot level. As long as that is not being broken, I do suspect that, you know, the market could possibly uh, throw us on the upside. The first target being 25,300 on the Bank Nifty. And I've said that my trading strategy will be guided by Bank Nifty. So given the fact that we find a maiden yellow immediately bounce back from there, my sense is that I think this is a good time to take profit on your short position, maybe explore a couple of long positions, not aggressively, but I think, you know, the, the initial uh, pitching, even if you're trading for the next two, three days, can be done now. Uh, I would uh, want to take long positions on HDFC Life if it breaks above 452, keep a stop at 443, look for targets of 470, and Bigard is a buy with a stop at 227 for targets of 244, and Bank Nifty would be a buy with a stop below days low and a target of around 25,250. Okay, gentlemen, we'll keep coming back to you for now. Uh, uh, Ayon Mukhopadhyay, Director of IFL Institutional Equities for UK and Europe, now joins us. Uh, uh, Ayon, good afternoon. Good to have you on the show. Uh, uh, you know, there's quite a bit of selling that we have seen from FII. Since you do represent the UK and Europe uh, part, uh, what's been the feedback uh, from, from the investors in that part uh, regarding the recent sell-off in India? Uh, good afternoon. Yes, the last uh, three weeks or so has been a bit of a uh, bit of turbulence in the market. Of course, some of the selling has been attributed to the the, the overall global sell-off that we have been seeing. But but increasingly, post the budget, uh, the some the slew of the policy reforms that we've seen has not gone down well with the, some of the investors that I've been speaking with. And uh, you know, there has been a sense of a set of complacency, as to say, with policy making that seems to have been set in. 
So uh, the, you know, the, uh, the, I, w I would say the people are still optimistic on India, but they are getting increasingly cautious on it. And uh, th this was expected that getting into the election year, you would see some amount of uh, re policies that would not be completely favorable to the market. But I think some of them, especially in a scenario where we are seeing the trade deficit expanding, in a scenario where you know we have a global uh, commodity inflation or uh, even the bond deals rising, and uh, the, we are still awaiting the, the full impact of the earnings recovery to come in. So I, I will not say that you know we are seeing a panic or something and you know an exodus from the Indian markets. But uh, given that other, other em emerging markets are doing quite well, so the incremental money that is coming in, the allocation of that may not happen completely in the set of degree that we'd expect to happen to India. So I will not say that the, the overall long-term story of India still remains strong, and I think a couple of weeks of here and there of turbulence doesn't impact the story as such. Mm -hmm. But of course, you know, it, the, the, the news that is coming in has had some jitters uh, across the world, yes. Okay, okay. just want to make a point, Surabhi. The Bank mm -hmm. Nifty uh, futures from a discount of 35 points all of a sudden have turned into a premium, and there's a bit of a move that you're seeing on the Bank Nifty right now. So. If, uh, uh, interesting uh, short covering happening a bit right now there. Okay, I guess uh, <clears throat> some of the shorts taking the money home ahead of expiry itself. Uh, Ayon, uh, you outlined quite a few factors why uh, you know foreign investors continue to be uh, slightly more cautious. Um, so, are you getting the sense that from a flows point of view, this market will have to continue relying and basically go back to its reliance on domestic flows? Because the month of January was very different, where we had a significant participation. All that has been turned around. We are net negative now for the year in terms of FII participation. Yes. So, I think the market in the short term will definitely be reliant on the domestic flows that it has been. And the optimism we've seen, I think we had close to about a, a huge amount of inflows in January and we had relentless selling in February. But as I said, the February selling also has been a bit attributed to the global queue. So, you can't completely attribute it to the, uh, you know, the long-term capital gains or all the other impacts on the budget. But yes, in the short term, I think, I think you will have to re rely more on the domestic flows. And of course, uh, uh, you know we'll have to see how the earnings recovery comes through. And it is generally the election year, so in an election year, you you will have to uh, factor in also uh, some sort of a uh, some sort of a consolidation happening. That was my next question, actually. Uh, in your you know conversation with uh, with clients, uh, how how big is politics a risk? Uh, this year we have four big state elections, and that could give us an indication of where 2019 is also headed. So. In that sense, uh, uh, politics as a risk? I think the biggest risk for foreigners is not, uh, not I, I, is the stability of a government. They do not want instability in the government. They do not want, uh, they do not want a scenario where you know, there'll be a coalition, where concessions needs to be made, there'll be policy paralysis. I think that is the biggest fear uh, most for, uh, FIS would be, happening, uh, ha would be having. So if you, if you have a, a very stable government at the center, I think that's all they would be looking at. So uh, concessions made to form alliances, concessions made for, for policies, that is something that they would not be looking at. And I think that is the risk uh, going into the election year that they would be, they would be very closely monitoring. Well, you know, when we're talking about the bear cocktail in February, I on a couple of other events kind of dominated headlines. We are talking about this huge fraud in, you know, one of the largest uh, PSU banks of the country. There's also the LTCG tax issue. In between, there was MSCI saying that maybe they could reduce the India weight because of the, you know, developments with both the exchanges cutting off data. Uh, are any of these significant factors for foreign investors? I mean, when you're talking about, let's say, the top two or three reasons why investors are cautious, uh, what would that, that hierarchy be? Yeah, I think the long-term capital gain is the biggest issue. Uh, the 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 bank fraud and the MSCI. I think I'll come back. I come to it, but I think the long-term capital gains tax, though it was in the it was in the news. I think that has that has upset quite a few foreigners. Mm -hmm. And uh, essentially, the reason that is upset is because first and foremost, the, the security transaction tax has not been removed. And uh, what what does you think it is? that has really upset them is that you know the difference between a long-term gain and for, especially for long-term investors 
the long term capital gains tax and short term capital gains tax difference is not really much so that's what that is that is surprising to people and in fact so you know some some of the people uh, some of the investors i speak to were even asking me that will this open up the adr market for example like like will like for example investing in the adr market now be more attractive because you know you you don't have to pay the the the, the short, short the capital gains tax there and would it gradually would indian companies be looking at raising money through the adr route if that is the case and of course adrs also give you the opportunity to short the market which which is which was again another uh, another thing that you know we we saw with with the singapore nifty uh, issue that came up so i think the long term capital gains tax has left a few, quite a few people disappointed uh, the return of, uh, return of that and Uh, so i think that is the single biggest issue the punjab national bank issue yes that's a scam and i think i think the the uh, the it is not it is not i would i would say it is not ruined the perception of anything but it is obviously dented it and that has also brought back the question of how much of the bank reforms is actually needed okay. in the system so the, the, so uh, banks reform probably is the biggest agenda that this government needs to get a, a itself in and regarding okay. the msci issue i think that's more of a posturing and i honestly don't think that's going to happen <laughs> so uh, let, i think that is that is something that's going to play out on its own okay ayan thanks a lot for your time today uh, have a good conference uh, that's the uh, ifl view uh, some more uh, statements from uh, uh, nirav modi of course he had written to his the colleagues that uh, it's going to be tough to uh, to pay the uh, salaries for now sp dulsan of spdulsan.com is with us now mr dulsan good afternoon what's wrong you think with madras and sumi uh, is, is the market overreacting to something uh, or is this just the overall market psyche uh, it's been quite a bit of sell off in the stock over the last 3 or 4 days sir i think this is more to do with the overreaction whenever you see one kind of report because if any fund or any institution is exiting from any stock maybe by compulsion of redemption or maybe you know because of the Uh, 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 reviewing on the, uh, the 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 outlook on the stock and all that they prepare a sell report and that sell report gets circulated and highlighted and we see the effect of that coming in honestly if you really ask me for the sector auto ancillary sector is going to see in, uh, remain in the in the quite positive uh, for state for the next couple of years and mother san sumi being leader in that space or one of the prominent company in that space i honestly don't see any reason but yes except for that this could just be an overreaction or the selling by the Uh, larger investors uh, from the in the in the in the company. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Tulsi and uh, Sir. Uh, quite a few uh, you know uh, stocks on the pharma side that are under the weather today. Uh, just wanted your specific thoughts on two of them. One is Sun Pharma, where everybody is wondering what next is happening with Halol, and the other is Biocon. We had that negative news come in on one of their Malaysian units in the morning. See, first taking call on Sun Pharma, I don't think that one can really define the timeline for Halol, and that's really the seem to be the bigger, the biggest figure for the for the stock to get out uh, re-rated. But if I just take a broad call on the pharma, I don't think that you have a very kind of positive news coming in either from US or from India. Maybe in US, the kind of Trump uh, uh, view that even he wants the medical medical expenses to be quite low. and even in india when you have the uh, uh, move by the government that you know you need to pre- prescribe the generic medicine and not the branded one i'm not saying that the effect of that will be seen severe for for sun pharma till that you don't have any kind of positive news seen seen building on pharma sectors per se and that could be the reason for the sun pharma to remain subdued their q3 numbers also have not, have, have been bit, have been quite disappointing coming specifically on biocon i'm not uh, too too worried for the Uh, FD observation, US FD observation in one of their overseas plant, and there you know one can because the biosimilar story in which the bio biocon is operating is seen to be quite strong, and the kind of uh, alliances which they have made with for 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 their drugs with the with the global giants are going to reap the rewards from the FY FY 20 onwards, and that will be seen quite positive. So that can be used as a buying opportunity on the dips, but maybe hold or uh, or 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 maybe uh, avoid. call can be given for the timing on sun farm okay but well the uh, interesting this market i mean obviously there's uh, uh, some recovery as well uh, but uh, obviously on recoveries there's some selling pressure as well which comes back so uh, just take a look at that uh, just somehow not able to get past the days high uh, and of course uh, move past that so every time it's doing that there's minor bit of selling pressure we'll do one thing we'll take a break up next we'll get you uh, our uh, Fortnightly segment uh, Kedia Nomics, where Sushil Kedia will join in 
to talk about the technicals of uh, global equities, Indian equities of course, uh, and a couple of stocks to watch out for. Welcome back. Still close to the flat line on the Nifty. The mid-cap index has been underperforming and the Nifty Bank also just about 40 points higher, not getting a bigger move, at least not right now. Well, then let's focus on individual stocks as always and get a couple of trading ideas going. Sandeep Bagley with us. Good afternoon, Sandeep. What is on your trading list today? Afternoon, Surabhi. I see the markets going down. I see some more weakness. The metal space is weak. I would go with a sell in a Tata Steel. Stop loss of 642, target 621. The second call is a sell in a Mother Sun Sumi. Stop loss 321, target 297. Okay, thanks a lot for those uh, trading ideas, uh, Sandeep. Uh, so, uh, you know, Mother Sun Sumi, we have already discussed. Uh, Mr. Tulsian, uh, this... Uh, Balrampur Chini buyback, uh, very low on acceptance, 3.7. The results were not good at, uh, at all. And buyback was perhaps acting as a bit of a trigger till now. Uh, do you think uh, there could be more uh, selling in Balrampur Chini? It's already down 5% today. See, if you see the total buyback is 2.81%. And the management have said that, yes, they will also be seen participating. In fact, in the previous buyback, also the management have participated in the, in the, in the issue. So I don't think that why the acceptance ratio will be more than 3% even, you know, because that has been the trend. But coming on, probably management have thought that this is the time instead of... Uh, in fact, I have, I have never, you know, been, been convinced with these kind of things when you are inviting the buyback or going for a buyback on a tender route where, they you know, administration cost itself is quite high. And the, and the buyback is just of 100 crore. In fact, this is more of to do with the quantum. Because FY17, they have seen the record performance pat of about 750 crore. Even the current year, I don't think that why they will not be making a pat of about 500, 600 crore. And company now all uh, virtually debt free except for their uh, sugar development fund, you know, some debt of about 150, 200 crore. The amount itself is seen to be quite low. So maybe because uh, just management must have thought, but I am not convinced with a buyback uh, size of 99 crore and uh, that too for the dilution of less than 3%. Okay, that's by Rampur Chini. By the way, a couple of stocks on the move. Uh, let's just pull up first source. Midcap IT, actually all of IT, midcap and large cap, has been quite a flavor today in the market. First source is uh, joining in that party with a 5% up move. And uh, Edelweiss is worth uh, keeping on our radar as well. There's some buying uh, taking place on Edelweiss. That stock's up 3% as we speak, so some moves happening there. Okay, our next guest on the show is uh, Sushil Kedia, founder of Kedianomics. He's with us in the studio. Sushil, uh, thanks for joining in. Pleasure. So, you know, uh, everyone's been wondering now, uh, is this consolidation patch going to continue? Are we looking at a greater probability of a breakdown? Or do you think somewhere we are close to a bottom here? I would confess, uh, maybe uh, I have a bias uh, to be a contrarian. And with that, um, to me, it seems like on a trading time frame, market is scraping a bottom, so to say. Likely, it is uh, trying to frame a bear trap, uh, which is what happened two days ago. Uh, you know, certain levels broke on the downside and, you know, uh, selling thrust came in and market rallied by almost uh, 100, 150 points. I think even on a larger time frame, it's trying doing the same. I mean, none of the existing traditional frameworks, so to say, help me define or describe this quaint kind of market. So please allow me this poetic license to lean on a Bangla idiom, market ta dube dube jol khatche. As in, you know, market is masquerading as if it is going to be dipping, but with each dip, it is actually drinking water. So my mind is reading, uh, you know, maybe, you know, this painful uh, sort of a, a stuffed market for the next two, three days, and then we'll see a sustained rally coming in again. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, so she'll stay on. I'll just take one uh, one more question from Mr. Chan and, uh, you know, thank him. Mr. Chan. Uh, HDIL uh, is now getting out of f and uh, Is that impacting the stock? Uh, down about 5% today. And uh, your thoughts on the stock at 49? Probably that could be the reason. And it is good that it is moving out of f and because we should, in fact, remove these kind of stocks where only the speculative interest say without any fundamental scene existing you know much for the company i'm not saying that company is totally a, a write off but but uh, maybe the weakness is seen largely the effect of it's coming out of f and o but maybe once it corrects and settles maybe at a level of about 35 or so uh, at, at about 45 or so one can 
look to you know uh, 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 enter into the stock as an investor with a minimum 6 to 12 months view oh completely take your point mr dulsian has perpetually been in fno ban and just one day ahead of expiry gets out of fno ban thanks a lot mr dulsian of course we'll talk to you tomorrow uh, that was of course hdil so she'll good afternoon so good you know let, let, let's talk about uh, the the big moves right now for currency is seeing big move uh, and yes. uh, you know if that's impacting of course it stock so thoughts on 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 of course uh, rupee as well as the uh, the large cap it names see uh, i'll take the rupee first there's been an outsized move uh, in terms of you know uh, far more quicker weakening of the rupee um, than typically would happen so this has brought us close to a very crucial level of about uh, 65.5, 5, 65, where, you know, uh, uh, some crucial um, levels exist. Let's keep it simple and call them as crucial levels. And when I look at, you know, the relationship with the dollar index, it uh, doesn't seem like the rally of the dollar index for now is completed as yet. Uh, maybe, you know, a dip down to 89 is possible from the current levels of 89.75, but I'm looking at a potential of that going all the way to 91. Having said this, you know, the rupee dollar and the dollar index don't always move uh, lock in step typically the the rupee the dollar tends to rally against the rupee ahead of the major basket of the G G6 currencies so even while you know next uh, fortnight or so there may be a bullish bias in trading for the dollar index my suspicions are we are done with more or less on a on a broad uh, speculative time frame for the sustained weakness in the uh, rupee dollar and maybe you know next three four days you might see a sideways move and then again you know fear coming into 65 5 it will waste some time here but eventually i think you know the move to 58 should resume before this going past anything meaningfully above 65 05. so coming back to the equity market sushil since you are anticipating that after another you know, two three four sluggish days the market is going to take off on the upside what is going to lead it? What about the banks? That's the biggest question. What is the Nifty Bank telling you? I don't know if you see the PSU Bank uh, chart. What does that tell you? See, uh, for any particular sector or stock where there's a huge amount of negative sentiment, or for that matter, any strong sentiment, and if that is not actually getting met with the momentum readings, what I mean by momentum is you take any oscillator like an RSI. If prices have been sort of coming off a little bit, little bit, chipping off every day, but momentum has begun rising. So sentiment and momentum are not moving together, which means the pace of the fall has really declined. And I think, you know, this is one good uh, time for one to get warned that contrarian action is visible in the market. I'm not saying go and rush in and buy here, but let's conclude by saying it's too late to be a bear on the banks now on a trading time frame. And maybe we are at tad little early to play a bull on this except yes, maybe banks in particular you're saying yes okay uh, what about the large private banks Sushil? you know and uh, uh, also you know i want to include hdfc also the likes of hdfc bank hdfc uh, hmm. what are the chart patterns indicating here? see from the private ones uh, i'm keeping a hawk's eye on icici bank that should be the first horse to really bolt out it might just create a quick spike up hmm. uh, more than a tradable trend and so an HDFC bank or an HDFC, they've all, you know, had a four or five days of massive fall. And after that, they've all gone sideways. Mm -hmm. So uh, doesn't look like to me on HDFC or an HDFC bank that the next up move will be sort of a move to go into new highs. Mm -hmm. It will be maybe a large rally, uh, say 100 rupees odd, uh, flying up on an HDFC bank kind of a move. Okay. I'm not seeing a bull market really resuming in them in a hurry. Well, what about names like Maruti and Aisha that have corrected quite a bit? See, the auto sector is the one uh, where I think, you know, this rally should find its uh, uh, strength from. But as I said, you know, I'll have to wait for a few more days to find a firm signal. Hmm. Uh, We're too late to be a seller here. And a little, little early to, you know, start getting aggressive on the buying side. Is the same Tata Motors is also in the same vein. Is this IT rally, and it's already several weeks old now, is it showing uh, more grit? Is it showing legs to you? and you know in any individual stocks if you could point out see the four major it stocks uh, are all uh, showing uh, uh, very different uh, outlooks over the next 10 15 days infosys which has had a, a stronger rally seems like is a sell and might uh, get down from current levels by as much as uh, 8 to 10 percent and whereas wipro and tcs are right now you know floating sideways not giving me a clear signal as to which way should i tip my hat on and so HCL Tech, uh, maybe, you know, it's uh, 
further 2-3% more pain for somebody who's already begun nibbling into it or maybe you know a long trade will come in uh, another 2-3% lower. So broadly speaking the IT stocks uh, as a whole are not really displaying any uh, group behavior so to say they are all floating in their individual orbits. Okay finally then uh, global screen uh, how's that looking uh, US market has been so volatile of late. Uh, uh, dollar index, crude, yeah. I mean, anything that you want to touch? S&P 500, uh, which has uh, uh, rallied substantially from uh, the lows that it saw, I think next two, three days it's going to be mellow further, maybe, you know, a kind of a pullback of another percent and a half too. I have strong suspicions, you know, S&P 500 might defy logic yet again, which it has been uh, doing for a long time. And this might be one index which again goes into a new high within the first half of March. Mm -hmm. Gold is one trade where I think, you know, a clear-cut sell exists and on MCX terms, maybe, you know, a thousand point fall is uh, there to catch. Uh, maybe it will become 2000 and um, crude is uh, sort of in a trading range with a toppy feeling. So I don't want to really punch out a trade on that right now. And to round it off, uh, we were discussing Balram Purchini right now, uh, you know, just, just before uh, and bit of, uh, you know, negativity or uh, discomfiture on the buyback and all. I think it's all locked up into the price. Uh, from my chart reading, um, I am okay. waiting to grab that stock for a 40% ride up. All right, Sushil. Good talking to you. Thanks a lot for your time today. Okay. Uh, that's the view from Sushil Kedia. Uh, believes that uh, after this correction, once it's over, new highs are still a possibility. We'll do one thing. We'll take a break. Up next, we'll have the BTSC call. Buy today, sell tomorrow from our technical experts. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Uh, well, uh, it's a really a very volatile market and once again now the Sensex is up 100 points, the Nifty is up 21 and uh, uh, the Bank Nifty is up 40, the Mid-Cap Index is also recovering. Uh, suffice to say it's no repeat of last hour move when you had that big decline uh, post 230. That's something that the bulls would like. Uh, but what about the BTSC calls? Ashwini Gujral and Mitesh Chakka with us for that. Uh, Ashwini, uh, thoughts on index first and of course your BTSC calls? See, financials are seeing a clear amount of short covering, not only banks, but even uh, NBFCs. Today is the second day when, you know, PSU bank index is uh, going home with some gains. So, you know, wherever the problem was, if that space starts to show a pullback or starts to heal, uh, that helps the rest of the market. So, it would be useful, uh, you know, uh, if you would take my advice to uh, buy 10,400 March calls and if you get a good 100, 150 uh, point pullback, uh, I think the shorts really don't, are not finding traction at lower levels. So uh, there has to be a bit of short covering and, you know, a, probably a brisk rally uh, before fresh shorts can come in. So uh, that people should take on board and not carry shorts into tomorrow. As far as stocks are concerned, Yes Bank is a buy with a stock of 305, target of 321. Uh, Jet Airways is a sell with a stop of 746, target of 720. And uh, DHFL is a buy with a stop of 546, target of 570. Okay, <clears throat> well, buying on IT is uh, well and truly intact. It's CL Tech is now at the day's highs, over 3% higher on that stock. Mitesh, let's get your ideas going as well. You're going with uh, one buy and one sell? That's right. Uh, 
I think very clearly, uh, I have a uh, buy on Chola Financial. I think Ashwin also covered the stock. Good intraday pattern buy with the stop at 13.46 for targets of 14.25, while Equitas is an STBT with a stop at 142. Uh, for targets of 134 and I would like to flag out a stock IDB limited I think we yeah. had a call there yesterday and today morning as well nice breakout happening over there right now as these markets close still can be bought with the stop at 68 for targets of around 75 actually that was going to be my next question uh, Mitesh you answered that IDB I just look at that uh, mm -hmm. stock and uh, it's really been the sort of uh, you know the, the the lone wolf I mean if you look at the uh, stock and compare it to the sector uh, IDB is the one which stands out uh, uh, five and a half percent higher on that stock and if you see the chart of the stock just pull out slightly longer term chart of IDBI if you can pull out say a weekly chart and a monthly chart that would be really helpful uh, not three month uh, three month I mean uh, yeah three months also uh, it's outperforming the CNX uh, or the PSU bank nifty but if you see the the one month chart of uh, IDBI bank uh, and if you were to compare that with the kind of move that the rest of the banking space has seen over one month it's up actually 16 percent now you compare that to say uh, the Nifty PSU Bank or uh, say a PNB or SBI, you will see that there's a stark outperformance that you've seen for IDBI Bank. So that quite clearly is interesting. Uh, uh, other uh, interesting stocks, Ashwin, that I wanted your thoughts on. Uh, uh, as we speak, TCS is now at the high point of the day and Voltas. See, TCS uh, hasn't really corrected a whole lot, I think a couple of hundred bucks. It appears very clear that whenever the next uh, rally starts uh, or the resumption of the bull market, IT will uh, probably lead it and TCS will be one of the market leading stocks. So if you are going home long, I think uh, TCS you can take home and probably look for near term targets of 3150, 3200. Okay, uh, <clears throat> Ashwini, these stocks at one point, of course, uh, were among your favorites. I'm talking about. Uh, NBFCs, which were earlier pure brokers, so both Motilal as well as Edelweiss, both these stocks have had a decent run today. Uh, any preferences here? Any fresh trades that come to mind? Well, I guess they are indicating that market may be bottoming out. <laughs> See, they are in a bull market. They have corrected 20-25%, so these are good levels to get into them. Now, whether they'll get into a consolidation or make new highs, I think a consolidation is more likely because, you know, Motilal started from 250, got up to 1500. So 1100, 1500 type consolidation is easy, easily possible. But you can see that everywhere there is short covering which is uh, coming in. And that is one of the reasons why IDBI, etc. are moving the way they are moving. I think this should uh, catch steam uh, even further in the next couple of days. Okay, interesting. Uh uh, I mean, uh, apart from IDBI Bank, of course, which now is a top window gainer, you also have uh, you know the tech stock which have now moved to the high point. So we mentioned uh, uh, TCS, but Tech Mahindra, Hexaware is at high point. Chola Mandalam, which was a pick of both Ashwini and Mitesh, uh, is at high point. And DHFL is making a bit of a move right now. Uh, 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 Mitesh, thoughts on DHFL? Uh, again, I think, you know, uh, Anuj, this is a stock which Ashwini had covered already. I think, uh, to me, it does look like intraday charts have turned positive. Uh, I would want, still want to see the stock get past levels of 560 to 565. I think that should add more strength and then we can even look at targets close to about 595 over here. Sun Pharma refuses to uh, you know, show any traction, still down 6% on that stock. So that's continuing to drag its feet. Uh, yes, Bank, IOC, these are some of the names. Actually, Sipla has seen some recovery from the lows, but not so much on Sun Pharma. For the market, Anuj, I mean, how does it look today? Unlike yesterday, as you were saying, yeah. that we haven't cracked because this was a point where suddenly the ground started caving in yesterday. Yeah, That's yeah, not the case today. Yeah, you know, as we said, 2.30 mm -hmm. as well, you know, it's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it would have been too much of a coincidence if, again, you know, you would have seen that kind of fall. So to be. Look, one thing is which is certain and which is clear is that uh, banks are no longer the leaders of this market. That sector is IT. And if you take a look at TCS today and just see the chart of TCS, uh, at no point has it blinked. You know, it's just consistent one-way move on TCS. And I think that's similar if you see the, the intraday chart of other stocks as well. Uh, uh, that was, of course, Nifty IT. Look at TCS. It's a, you know, it's, a, it's the kind of chart that the bulls love because you, know, you have a decent bit of gap up. After that, some consolidation, another rally, then consolidation, then another rally. And this is the largest IT stock that we are talking about. So there's, there's at least got, you know, you've got one large sector which is at least... Uh, in a bull market of its own, regardless of what's happening with the rest of the market. So, uh, uh, 
with with that uh, being there, it's it's tough for the Nifty to sort of break down completely. The mm. problem for the market is that banks have more weight on the index than IT has. Uh, the bank Nifty still accounts for more, and that where that is where uh, you know there's still the, some problem because even today's move on the bank Nifty may not be as convincing as say it is on the on the IT stocks. So mm. that I think is going to be a problem here. So it's going to be a bit of a dichotomy here where you know perhaps you see the Nifty outperforming because it's got a couple of other stocks as well in the past. You know ITC has moved up, Larsen has moved up, so these stocks could support. So mm. uh, t today's move clearly is indicating that once again a large amount of money is moving towards IT stocks. Uh, I would want to also see the, the FI and DI stats today. Is mm -hmm. there some buying which is reflecting in some of these IT names? Oh, absolutely. Well, IT has done the heavy listing, lifting and it's taken the Nifty once again back to 10,400. That level is back on the screen. Good time to get some uh, more opinion and some global opinion at that. Earlier in the day, we caught up with uh, the keynote speaker and noted economist Jim Walker, founder of Asianomics, on the sidelines of the IFL Enterprising India Conference. We got his sense on why he is still overweight on China. Uh, and this is happening for the first time in a decade. And whether that means that a lot of money is going to move out of India and go to our neighbor market. I don't think a, a lot of foreign money is going to move out of India and go to China. I think um, the foreign money is here for a reason, and it's a very uh, solid reason. That's that the demographics of India are excellent and the prospects of economic growth are fantastic over the next five to ten years. So uh, it's not really a question of choosing India over China, except in the sense of a, a, a relative maybe uh, market move over uh, a 12 month period. Now, very few of the long term fund managers are going to sell down their Indian stocks to take advantage of perhaps a slight outperformance in China uh, mm. over the next 12 months. But there's a lot of money still sitting in the sidelines in uh, the developed countries that uh, uh, could be put to work in emerging markets. And in that basis, China is actually one of the relatively uh, attractive emerging markets just now. Your thoughts on the recent developments in India, and in particular this this big PNB fraud? Uh, uh, you know, do, do you think that this has the potential to sort of derate the India story? Um, derate it? I, I I think probably not so much derate it, but it, it exemplifies the problem in the banking system and, and really just brings it back to light again. You know, this is one of the things that we've been trying to say to our clients for the last two years and trying to get over in our research that. There really has to be a, a concerted effort to recapitalise the Indian banking system. On the basis of our measures, real lending rates in India are far, far too high. They're way above the level that we uh, are comfortable with in terms of promoting an investment cycle and an economic growth cycle. And the main reason that they're high is not because of RBI official rates, but because the banking system has not been able to, to transmit interest rate cuts into lending rate cuts. And the reason for that, uh, of course, is the bad debts in the system uh, and the oversupply of banks. There's just too many banks. There needs to be consolidation and recapitalization. And the government really needs to bite the bullet on this one. You know, uh, I wanted your overall view on Indian markets. There has been an underperformance of Indian equities uh, this year vis-a-vis -vis other EMs. There has been a, a minor underperformance of the rupee as well. Is this just mean reversion after a great performance last year? Or is there a worry about Indian macros now that's lately developing? No, I, I think you've uh, hit the nail on the head. Uh, India has been such a tremendous performer, not just last year, but really since 2013. Uh, there, there's probably a bit of indigestion out there in the sense that the, the market valuations have run ahead. The, the, the corporate earnings results have just been OK. Um, the, the profit cycle hasn't turned up in the way that it really should uh, at this stage in the, uh, the economic cycle. And that's probably giving people a bit of pause for thought. We, we in our uh, strategy report at the end of the year, for the first time since 2013, downgraded India from overweight to neutral, purely on a, a cyclical basis for 2018. Um, so the, the underperformance, I think, uh, was predictable, but as much because the, the outperformance has just been phenomenal for the last few years. How, how do Indian valuations stack up now? Do you think, you know, you spoke about indigestion with uh, people having had enough of India. At this point in time, do you think, therefore, a, a good, goodish bit of selling has to happen before you advise people to buy here? Or do you think you're finding value? 
No, I, I don't really mean indigestion in the sense that people have got to get out of India at all. I, I certainly wouldn't recommend any of our clients who are long-term portfolio managers, uh, possibly pension fund managers, to be selling in any Indian stocks at all unless it was something that they didn't like anymore. Um, they should really be buying uh, steadily over time. Um, but there's no doubt that the, the, the valuations in India uh, have become a bit richer than in many other emerging markets, at a point where the, the earnings cycle doesn't look that buoyant. And that's uh, a time that I think people can, can take a chance of uh, putting money to work in other markets, at least for a short, term, a short time, until the valuations in India uh, become a bit more attractive again, and then they should be <laughs> restart their buying. Uh, Jim, I wanted your thoughts on how the global markets could pan out from here because last year was exceptionally good, but the start to this year has not been so good. Um, how are you dealing with the macros and the micros in the global markets now? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of uh, confusion at the moment, but uh, the, the one thing that hasn't changed is that, uh, that there is a synchronised global recovery going on. It's uh, uh, strong growth, or not strong, but good growth in the US good growth in Europe, good growth in Japan, which is a, an amazing one. Um, all of that feeding back into emerging markets as well. China uh, moving forward rather nicely. There's plenty of growth going on. And with that, there will be plenty of corporate uh, profitability and plenty of earnings upsides over the course of 2018.